Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Storm Collectibles Mortal Kombat Shao Kahn figure, which is finally out. It's the one that I think most people were most excited about, especially from the MK line, but maybe out of all the lines, Shao Kahn is one that everybody seems to have been interested in. And for good reason, there's no good figures of them out there, and this one looks pretty awesome. Or at least it looked pretty awesome, and now it is pretty awesome. So there's kind of a lot to talk about, but at the same time, not all that much. It's basically your standard Storm Collectibles figure with some cool stuff on top. So let's go ahead and get this guy off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands, including his helmet, just shy of 9 inches, which makes him just about... About 22 and a half centimeters. Now I imagine most people are going to keep the helmet on, but of course it does come off, so that will change his height a little bit. That puts him at about 21 and a half. And that makes him about, eh, about 8 and 3 eighths, something like that. So, yeah, he's definitely a big figure, especially if you leave that helmet on. It makes him look a little bit more imposing. And he's got some nice size to him. Now, some people seem to want him to be just gigantic and huge, and he's really not that big. I went through a lot of images from various games, and, yeah, he's a big dude, but he's not supposed to be, like, Zangief size, for instance. So let's go ahead and do some height comparisons with the other Storm figures, since... You know, Storm's putting out all these different fighting game franchises. People are gonna mix them up on the shelves. So let me go ahead and drop the camera so you have a better angle for the height comparison. So there's Khan right there. We might lose focus for a second, but that's okay. And then we have Zangief. He's definitely got a lot, lot more bulk and a little bit more height. Not a ton, but enough. And then, of course, we have to mix in some Tekken right there. Hihachi, which isn't even close to either of them. And then, of course, we have to mix in your standard Mortal Kombat Ninja, because you're going to have to compare those two guys, for sure. So he's very much smaller than, than Khan. He's about to the top of the pecs. So, there's that. And then, of course, one last one for all of you guys out there who, who always want size comparisons, even though it's not absolutely essential... I do have a Marvel Legends figure to compare. Now this is not one of the smaller ones. He's he's one of the medium build guys. So there you go. He's a lot shorter, a little bit shorter than the Ninja. All right, all right. So now you've got all your size comparisons that are relevant. What the hell? Let's throw this one up there too. There's our new build a figure compared to Khan. He's a lot bigger. All right, there we go. Size comparisons out of the way for the year. I'm done. There it is. Okay, now, as far as this guy goes, like I said, it's your basic Storm figure with lots of stuff on top, and that's because the whole chest harness, this X piece right here, and the shoulder pads, that's all one separate floating piece. These guys actually peg into that cross piece, so they kind of just bounce around up there, which is kind of an issue, and we'll talk about that as we go through the articulation. But that's all separate. This is a separate piece. The whole belt is a floating piece, and then each of these knee pads and shin pads are a separate piece as well, so it's all just floating on top of but it's essentially the same type of figure that we've already seen. As far as paint goes, it's really clean, mostly because everything's a separate piece for the most part, so you don't have to worry about paint issues, other than these straps up here by the shoulders are actually molded in. It's a little weird because this one's molded in farther out, and this one's molded in farther in. Not, a, not the hugest deal in the world, but that's okay. And of course, like I said, the helmet is a separate piece. There is a little bit of paint work on the feet, those lines and everything, like the sandals, that is actually a really dark brown, as opposed to the black, which is kind of nice. And then, of course, where you have the, the brown coming up to the skin for his socks, that that's painted pretty cleanly, too. So, overall, it's nice. The silver that's painted on the, on the harness is really nice. There is shading throughout the shoulder pads, so that's good. We have the gold and silver for the spikes. A little bit of dry brushing going on down here. These little hand claw thingies are painted nicely. Overall, it's a very aesthetically pleasing figure. His helmet has a little bit of shading going on throughout. Very nice metallic silver right there, I might add. Very well done. And then his face, of course, has a pretty clean paint job. Not a whole lot going on, but, but enough. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about accessories. The first one we're going to talk about is the helmet. And now here's the thing, guys. It does look awesome, yes. I, I will not disagree with you there. However... It's impossible to make a helmet fit properly, or at least virtually impossible to make a helmet fit properly on a figure when it's removable. So it is slightly oversized. It is soft plastic, by the way, so you don't have to worry about anything breaking, really, but like the horns. It is slightly oversized. Is it terrible? Not, not even a little bit, but it, it, you'll notice it looks a little bit big. I think personally I would have preferred we just had an extra head, or maybe still only two different heads, but one of them had the helmet on permanently. I think that might have been better, that way it could be the exact right size, but it still looks pretty awesome. It's fine, and you can see 
let me uh, let me adjust the camera. You can see his eyes going through there, so it's not grossly oversized. It's just a little bit. It's a little tricky to get it to sit just right, but it'll do. It'll do. You can see the uh, top part of the jaw thing there kind of covers his whole mouth. And I, I don't think that's accurate. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. But either way, it's fine. It still looks good. It does get in the way a little bit when it comes to uh, the shoulder pads. But luckily they bounce around a lot, so that's not an issue. We'll talk about that more with the articulation. Now, for the other accessories, we have two different heads. We have the neutral head that comes on him in the package. And then we have another head where he's making kind of a grimacey face. And they all look real, both look really nice. Very well done. And then we have a bunch of different hands. We have the two loose hands that come on them in the package, two fist hands, two gripping hands, two pointing finger hands, and two kind of style pose hands. Uh, we also have his hammer, which is done very nicely. Mine's got a little bit of a warp in the handle from the packaging, but uh, that's nothing a little hair dryer action won't fix. A little bit of blood on there looks very nice. And then lastly, we do have his throne, which is made out of the same material that you might expect a dog toy to be made out of, but I'm not faulting them for that. I mean... It's got to be made out of something, and it needs to be cheap and big, and so that's that's the way it goes, and that's fine. It looks fine. The sculpt is sharp enough on there. You can squish it a little bit. Um, ooh, that doesn't smell good. It looks nice. It's fine. I don't know if people are complaining about the material. It doesn't bother me any. That's that's pretty much what I expected it to be, and it's okay. I mean, sure, you could expect a little bit maybe cleaner paint job, I guess, if you're really being nitpicky, but I think it looks fine. I think it's all right. He can sit on it, luckily. Uh, we can move his legs around. For some reason, this one leg doesn't want to move as much on, on my particular figure. But he does sit on it just fine. And of course you can play around with it to make him sit properly. But no issues at all getting him to sit, so that's good. He's fine. So, plenty of good accessories there. Okay, so now for articulation, the head can move around just like all the other ones. The neck is soft. It doesn't really afford much though. You can't really, at least, I can't get my neck to move a whole lot. It's mostly just going to be the head on the top, which is a ball peg, but it's it's pretty static. Uh, again, you're not going to be able to do much with it anyway if you put the helmet on it, so it doesn't really matter too much. Now, these guys are not going to impede articulation at all. This one seems to sit pretty well, like that's just about perfect. This one, for whatever reason, it wants to swing all the way back, and no matter how much I readjust this chest harness, it I cannot get this shoulder pad to sit properly, so I wonder if that's a... A universal issue. If you guys already have this figure, I know Storm shipped out their orders a long time ago. Like, well, I guess that's not too bad. I brought it forward a little bit more than I would normally. Yeah, it's still it's still kind of finicky, but either way, they're it's okay. They're gonna get moved as you pose it anyway, so it's no big deal. But yeah, they'll just flop around wherever you want them to go. So then we still do have our standard Storm articulation. There's a big ball peg that connects the arm to the body. It's a little stiff, but you can get pretty good range out of that. It moves around pretty well. Then of course you can raise the arms up on the ball hinge and on that ball peg to get the arm up better than horizontal. So that's good. Full rotation. A little bit of uh, shredding going on so be careful. You don't want to break anything but it doesn't necessarily feel like it's going to break. Just be extra careful with that. Full range is fine. Bicep swivel is fine. Double jointed elbow. Better than 90. Look at that. On a nice thick elbow like that. That's great. I love it. Not the best looking in the back but it's definitely not the worst so that's fine. Again, this is a floating piece, and we have the same kind of wrists as always. So there's a ball peg in there that connects to this ball hinge, which has a straight peg that goes onto the hand. So you should be able to move the hands around however you want to, no problem at all. For the diaphragm, we have a really nice, I don't know if it's a double or a single, honestly, but you get great range. Let's see. Uh, it's probably a double. It feels like a double. Great range out of the upper torso, no problem at all. And again, this is a floating piece, so you can readjust it to cover up the seams if you want to, or... Pretty much do whatever you want with it, so that's good. Lower torso, there's a single ball peg in there underneath his trunks. I'm probably not going to be able to show you, they're a little bit stiff. No jokes there. Uh, but it, it, this is a really nice floating piece, very soft, and you can move the torso around pretty well. Forward and back in particular, really nice range. Side to side, not a ton, and then of course rotation's fine. So that's good, all of his joints are suitably effective. They're not particularly tight or anything like that. Maybe the shoulders, but not bro not breakage, so that's good. There's no breakage there. For the hips, I think they're, yeah, they just get caught up on the abdomen. It feels like the abdomen sits a little low for the hip articulation. But you can get them out at least far enough. It's not like he needs to do the splits anyway. And then you already saw I could bring the legs pretty far forward. There is a thigh swivel, so that's pretty good. It does. It's just really tight in there. I don't know if you can see 
His, his abdomen, you probably can't. His abdomen comes down pretty low behind the trunks, and so his hips go up pretty high behind the trunks. So there's not a whole lot of clearance in there, but if you finagle things, you can get better range. But they still have decent range to begin with. I don't notice anything particularly loose. There's a little bit of flopping in some positions, but it's not, it's not even flopping. I guess that's okay. Double jointed knees, no problem. Not as tight as I'd prefer necessarily, but not floppy, so that's good. And this is again a soft piece, so it won't get in the way. Same thing for this. And now for the ankles, they're basically just Marvel Legends ankles, uh, effectively anyway. They go back pretty far, no problem there. Going forward, you get almost no range. That's really got to get be fixed by Storm. Most of the ankles that they're putting out can't go forward at all. You do get a toe hinge, which is nice, but we need that exaggerated ankle movement on an action figure because they're not real people and they need to be able to put in dynamic poses. So ultimately, the, the biggest gripes on this guy are that the ankles don't go very far forward. Uh, this one shoulder pad's a little crooked, and then the helmet's slightly oversized. Those are not big complaints at all, guys. This figure's pretty dang awesome. So I can't, I can't recommend anything other than you need to get one because it's, it's really cool. It's, it's really, really cool. And these guys are going to get in the way of the helmet some, but that's not the figure's fault. So no big deal there. Get one of these. They should be in stock at Big Bad Toy Store within a couple of days. Uh, so if you want to get one before they sell out, uh, there will be a link in the description. Go ahead and order yourself one. I don't think you're, you're going to be disappointed. One of the most cool looking figures, one of the most fun figures we've had in a long time out of all the lines I review. So yeah, definitely get one guys. It's a lot of fun. Pretty awesome figure. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Guys, I have new videos up almost every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games. We stream three times a week where we make action figures with 3D modeling. Uh, just all kinds of fun stuff, guys. So make sure you turn on that little bell notification. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And in the meantime, keep collecting.